Okay, is the recording on? Yes. Good, awesome. Well, welcome to uh, Equipping Heaven Dwellers group meeting tonight. It's the 13th of March, and we welcome everyone who's with us. We honor all of you as beautiful spirit beings from the Father. We um, honor all those angels on assignment over your life. We honor the angels on assignment over equipping heaven dwellers. And we honor all of you who will be viewing this uh, video um, time uh, at your own time or leisure. <laughs> Today, this evening, we felt to um, share a little bit on that aspect of, of trading. And I, um, Kathy's going to be beautifully doing that, and I'm looking forward to that. I just I wanted to share something to start with, and that would simply be that everything that we're looking at right now has to do with our identity, our, our identity as sons, and particularly that we are family. We are family of Jesus, we are family of the Father, and we are family of one another. We are sons of God, we are brothers and sisters of one another. And in this place, I believe the greatest revelations we've had about how to live together in our true identity and live together with each other in true fellowship is going to um, be released and revealed by Holy Spirit to us. We do acknowledge always the covering government of Holy Spirit over us, and we trust Holy Spirit to bring his revelation or her revelation to each of us. <laughs> each of us. <laughs> and, and so um, without further ado, Kathy, over to you. After, just to say after um, Kathy shares, we will um, give opportunity. There is something on our heart that we felt to um, give opportunity to do a trade on and that you might um, participate in that with us. So go ahead, Kath. Okay, I forgot about that. Do a trade on some. Forgot about that. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do tonight is give you, um, there's quite a bit of material here, and you could probably preach several sermons on this if you want it or in such a mind. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is kind of give you an overview, and um, I'm expecting you to think about it and to, um, you know, if you can't take notes right now, I'll try and make it plain so you can re-listen to this and pick up the scripture verses and go look back over it on, you know, on your, by yourself later. So, but it's going to be kind of an overview because there's always more there's always a lot more <laughs> so so it's kind of an overview it's kind of an introduction and um there i'm not going to go into it deeply but i'm going to mention things that you can go look at for yourself um so to start out uh um we we come to we've come to understand by the by the spirit reading ezekiel 28 5 Actually, Ezekiel 28.5 says, to my understanding, Satan fell due to much trading. Um, different versions may use different words, but that's basically what it meant. So Satan fell due to much trading. What does that mean? Um, so in Ezekiel 28.5 also tells us about the king of Tyre. And he was kind of an earthly representation who manifested Satan, Satan and, and his... Um, personality and his deeds so this king of Tyre took gold from the temple of God in Jerusalem and built a city and so what he did was he kill, he killed stealed stole and destroyed so and as we know that's what we're told in the, the New Testament that that's what uh, Satan's that's what his um, his mo is right method of operation uh, is to kill steal and destroy so when i first started hearing about trading floors i um i started just going lord i um, I, I didn't really hear uh scripture references to it so i said lord you got to show me in the word where there's trading floors so the first thing i realized was that um the first trade that we make 
is we trade our sins for Jesus' righteousness. It's a, Jesus gives us a gift of righteousness, but we trade our sins on the cross for, by his blood for, um, for Jesus' righteousness, for righteousness with the Father. So that, that's, the, that's the basic trade. So the, the cross is a trading floor. Right? As I go through here, I'm going to list some of the, the godly trading floors, and I may list them again before I'm finished. But, um, so the cross is a trading floor. And uh, Jesus' blood is a trading floor. So the next one that Yeshua showed me was uh, the one in uh, I, ugh, Revelation 3, 17 and 18. And um, I, I just was blown away by this one, actually. Um, I, I guess I'm not going to read it out of the Bible. I'm just going to go from my memory because it's just been so uh, big to me. Um, so in 3.17, we're told, we're at, he actually tells us what to trade. I mean, straight out, he tells us what to trade. He uses the word buy in this passage, but buying is trading, okay? So um, he tells us to trade our wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked condition for his gold refined in the fire, for his garment of white to cover our nakedness, and for eye salve. Now, as I pondered on this, I could see that his gold refined in the fire. I mean, we all go through the fire to, to, um, to give up our, our earth selves and, and to um, the refining fire of God. I mean, I'm not even going to go there, but you know what that is. So, and then the other one is the garment of white. Well, when you put all of the frequencies of light together, you get white. So I personally believe that it's what he's talking about here is the garment of white light. So that, that was the second thing, was to trade for a garment of white light to cover our nakedness. Now, our nakedness is our, our, our body and soul, not without clothes on, but without our spirit man on. And eyes have so that we can see in the spirit realm. And so he tells us to trade these things. And then about four, three verses later, he, he's, he's, um, the angel is saying to John, come up here. Now, I read that and I'm going, you know, that's not a, well, you know what, if you'd like to, to journey into heaven, just go ahead, you know. It's a come up here. It's a demand. It's a command. It's an invitation to everybody, to all of us. And, um, and then in that verse, it says, you come up here and I will show you the things to come. And I'm like, that's the timeline. I mean, just look at it. It's the timeline. We're, we're commanded to come up here, and then he's told us that we can see on the timeline. I mean, I was just blown away. I mean, so there's a trade. I mean, if we trade our wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, naked condition, then the result is that we, we can enter in, we can come up, we can ascend, and we can see on the timeline with our spiritual eyes that have been opened. Anyway, that, that one was just, that one blew me away. So that was the first one that the Lord showed me. And the second one he showed me was in Isaiah 60, 61, 3. And there's a beautiful song about this. I've always loved this song. But it's about, he gives me beauty for ashes, a oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise for heaviness. So those are all trades. He, we give him our ashes, and he gives us beauty. We give him our mourning, and he gives us the oil of joy. We give him our heaviness, and he gives us a garment of praise. So um, another uh, trade that we do, I don't really have a scripture for this one, but we trade our darkness or our dwelling in darkness for dwelling in his light. I think John said something about that, didn't he? He who dwells in the light. Okay, um, let's see. So, um, and I recently, oh, oh, so Psalm 37 is also, a, there's a whole bunch of trades in Psalm 37. Now, now I've come to realize that any time you could say if, like if the Lord is my shepherd, then I shall not want. That's a, if that, that's a trade. If the Lord is your shepherd. He's not saying anybody. You, it, the Lord has to be your shepherd or you cannot want. Okay. So it's a trade. If then. And so Psalm Psalm 23, the whole thing is a trait. I mean, you just look at it yourself and see if you can see it, but the whole thing is a trait. Also, Psalm 37. 
um, there's all kinds of trades in Psalm 37. Trust, Psalm 37.3 says, trust in Yahweh, live in the land, and be secure. So it's like, if you trust in Yahweh, you will live in the land and be secure. If you take delight in Yahweh, he will give you the desires of your heart. If you commit your way to Yahweh and trust him, he will vindicate you. If you refrain from anger and wrath, you shall inherit the land. So in Psalm 37, 3, there's actually six times that he tells us that we will inherit the land. And there's over 17 promises or exhortations in Psalm 37. It's really an awesome psalm. So it, and there's a, there's a lot of stuff about trading there. Okay, so if there's um, godly trading floors, there's satanic trading floors. And so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go into this very deeply. Um, I've heard other teachings on it. I'm sure we could go into it deeply. I'm just going to kind of go over them and kind of list them and give you very brief um, what happens on these trading floors. So there's the Satan's trading floors. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them that we have listed. There's probably more, but this is what we have listed. So the first one is Tyre, like the king of Tyre, Tyre, T-Y-R-E. And the, the saint, this trading floor is about money and materialism. And then there's Athaliah. Now, I understand that Athaliah and Jezebel were daughters of the king of Tyre. So these three are all related. But Athaliah, um, and she was married to the king of, Israel, I believe, because Jezebel was married to the king of Judah. So um, Athaliah, if you read her story, you'll see that she desired to steal the kingly seed. So Athaliah's um, thing is about stealing your seed. Jezebel is all about manipulation, control, witchcraft, and domination. So if you see any of those things happening around you, then you'll know that Jezebel is in operation there. Or, or people are trading on that trading floor. Cain is another satanic trading floor, and his trading floor is murder. Delilah is a trading floor, and her trading floor is seduction. Leviathan, Leviathan is a trading floor, and that one is gossip, lies, and deception. Apollyon is another uh, satanic trading floor. And he opposes the gospel. So anytime that you find yourself unwilling or unable to, uh, to speak the gospel to someone, Apollyon is, is in, in force, is working. So like I said, um, I'm sure there's more, and I don't really want to give him glory, but it helps to know because um, if we have traded on these floors, we need to ask forgiveness. And you can ask the Lord, and he will show you. And these are things you could take to court, in the court, and, um, and be forgiven and be cleansed and, and get divorce papers. And so that, um, so that though, because when you do trade on these floors, it opens the doors to uh, demonic, the demonic activity and to curses. Um, one example is in the Masonic system, the Masonic orders, they have black and white checkered floors. Those are symbols of satanic trading floors, black and white checkered floors. Maybe you've seen those. If you're using Satan's trading floors, that means you're not trusting God. Um, Yahweh desires to be our full supply. And when we're trading on Satan's trading floors, we're looking for our, our needs to be met, our full supply to be met somewhere outside of, of Yahweh. So um, let's see, I have a, uh, the godly holy trading force that we want to be trading on. Um, I already said it was the blood of Jesus. And so that would be the blood or the light that comes from Yeshua, the cross, where the cross takes up our, takes our sins. Um, um, the body of Yeshua is also a trading floor. His stripes were, he traded his stripes for our healing. And there's, there's more, actually. I think that the crown of thorns is also a trading floor. 
And every opening in Jesus' blood, body where he shed blood is a trading floor that you can go to. Um, your own life is a trading floor. If your life is laid down for the Lord, you can trade your life into that. You can trade on your life for things. The people in the great cloud of witnesses and um, the men in white linen, they, are, they traded their lives into the gospel, and they're, they're now trading um, on, in our, into our lives with their lives. They're trading into our lives with their lives. Um, the sea of glass is another trading floor that we use. It's before the throne. And you might not have been introduced to this concept yet, but, um, but it'll come up. So when we take things into court and, and get them, uh, get a verdict of innocent, then we can take that to the sea of glass and trade. When I do that, when I was cleaning up my DNA, um, the things that had been stolen from me, like if um, peace had been stolen from me or purity or righteousness, that's what I traded for. I traded for whatever had been, had been stolen from me by, by either my ancestor's acts or my own or by the, the satanic trading floors that I traded on. Um, so the sea of glass is a really fun trading floor. And then, like I already mentioned, uh, Psalm 23. Um, I just heard a teaching on that about how Psalm 23 is. Um, and, and after I heard that, I realized that it's actually a trading floor. So um, I haven't pursued that one very much, but I will be because, um, because, yeah, there's a lot there. There's really a lot there. So that's just a really brief overview. It's like bullets. I realize I haven't... Um, haven't developed any of these things, and so hopefully it'll help you to ask questions and wonder, because if you do, then the, the Holy Spirit will answer your question, or you'll find another, or put your questions um, up in the, uh, in the chat, and, and we'll um, talk about it some more, either there or, or in another session here. Okay, any questions? Was it too fast? <laughs> okay, I just wanted to um, add a little to that, Kat. Thank you. That's has some great trading, trading, um, trading understanding and trading flaws. Um, just simply put, trading is another name for agreeing with. You're trading into something is what you're agreeing with. So as new creatures in Christ, new a new creation in Christ, as we start out and we begin to grow in who we truly are, we begin to understand more about what we're agreeing with. And we learn, we, we, Holy Spirit frees us and untethers us from wrong agreements. And wrong agreements goes into wrong patterns, which produce wrong fruit and so we begin to come into the true tree of life and out of agreement with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil which is the tree that satan is satan's tree basically um, so what happens is that we begin to we begin to understand that every every time we're making a decision we we're going to look and see with the Holy Spirit, what's the end result of this decision? What's the motive of my heart? And what's the end result of this decision? And if I can see that the motive of my heart and the end result of this decision is a trade into the kingdom of light, is a trade into the Holy Spirit's leading, is a trade into the, the godly tradings that Kathy pointed out, then I would trade that. I would agree with that. If, if, I see that it's a wrong trade. If, if there's fear motivating me to say something or do something, that's a wrong trade. That's a, that's a wrong trading floor, right? Because the trading floor of the tree of life is love. The trading floor of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the trading floor of Satan is fear. It's founded, it's founded in fear. It's founded in, uh, in, in, in diminishing our true identity and so on and, 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 and so forth. So, in a, in a, we can see clearly now that it's, it's actually, it's actually something we're doing all the time.
Um, I don't know if there's any questions that uh, Kathy asked, if there were any questions. Um, if there are, we can please go ahead and put your video on and ask your question. And otherwise, we'll just continue on and we will experience something about uh, a trade that you can join in on in heaven. Okay, silence means <laughs> everybody's going. Um, <laughs> anyway, we do trust, you know, that as we share things, um, we do trust that Holy Spirit brings, um, we have that revelation is being released into each of our, in each of our hearts and in spirit. Um, that the eyes of our hearts are flooded with light as we, as we um, share these things. But it's part of breaking ourselves um, free and coming into more of the maturing as sons. We grow from little ones into becoming fathers in the faith. And so I wanted to just dovetail of what Kathy was sharing on trading with the whole idea of us becoming family, the whole idea of us understanding that we're not paupers, we're not less than, we're not more than any other brother or sister. Uh, the whole idea of understanding that our, our worth is, is unmeasurable, that we are honored and cherished our creator with immeasurable honor and love, each one of us that we each are a spirit being from the Father, and so there's no, no level of worth one can put on that except to honor one another and begin to relate with one another out of that reality. So whether we're a baby believer, whether we've been a believer for many years, it doesn't change the dynamic of our true worth as sons of God. And... So the importance of being family is so key because we are not orphans. And last uh, week we just talk, touched a little bit on that. We are not adopted into the Father's family. We are, from, we are spirit beings from the Father and we have come into the earth and been part of a soul and body forming in our mother's womb. We went over that over the last couple of weeks. And so the, the scripture that has often been interpreted as we've been adopted, actually is better interpreted, revealed. So we are revealed as sons of God. The revelation comes to us of who we truly are. This is the function of the Holy Spirit to reveal to us who we truly are. And Holy Spirit does a wonderful job and we come into an intimate relationship and honor Holy Spirit's government. That said, I want to just talk about how being family means that we recognize there's no one between us and our father, our daddy. There is no, uh, there's no person or group or church leadership that is a government over us, between us and our daddy. We are our daddy's children. We come from him. We come directly to our daddy. There's only one mediator that ever has been, and that's Jesus Christ. He is the head. So we are, we've never needed a covering of men. Um, even John pointed this out in 1 John when he says, you don't need that anyone should teach you because the Spirit teaches you all things and is true and is not a lie. And also in 1 John, he says, you know the truth, you know it all, because as spirit beings we do. But the Holy Spirit joined to us is awakening us to know and understand that in the soul part of us and the body part of us so we can come together, spirit, soul, and body as one and come into the greater uh, maturing as sons of God. So the important thing that we need to, to get is that we, we, whatever gifting 
flow between us, all they are is us facilitating each other. We are facilitating each other. And if we share something, it is for another person or, or us who hear it to take that and say, okay, well, let me see what God shows me about that. So we, we, can, we, can, we share with one another the gifts that, that we are to one another as family. Now, what we know is that we've had in the church a wrong understanding. It was a setup that was uh, Jesus warned us about not trading into. And he said, the Roman government, they lord it over you, uh, over the people. It shall not be that way with you. And then he went on and he said, do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and you're all sons, children. He said, do not call anyone on earth master or leader because you have one leader. Do not call anyone on earth teacher for you have one teacher who is the Holy Spirit. And so we were instructed by Jesus and he said, even if you wanted to be the leader, you would need to be the servant of all. And he was describing the way of heaven, the trade into what is heavenly. And what actually took place in the church was the opposite. And after AD 300 uh, and Constantine's um, in intervention in the way the church functioned, um, a hierarchy system was set up where Constantine appointed bishops, people to be bishops over or leaders over others. So he appointed among the brothers and sisters some to be above in a position of governmental authority over one another. What this ended up doing is we've had decades of people functioning as pastors or apostles or teachers or evangelists or, you know, um, five, five, fivefold gifting um, in a hierarchy fa of fashion or function. So that, and I'll give you a few examples, so that as a teacher, I come and I tell you, this is how it is. This is the doctrine. Believe it. Say yes and amen. You know, just stand up, sit down, shout, shout now. <laughs> it's like we're talking to our family in this kind of a mode. And then also things like, well, you know, you have to have, you have to be part of a local church because otherwise you're not going to be blessed because where you get planted is where you'll be blessed. But if you, if you're not part of that, Local church, you won't be blessed. And we, and we set ourselves up as a, as a local government. And then we say, um, you have to have a covering. If you don't have a covering, a man-made covering, if you don't have a covering of a pastor or an apostle or somebody over you, you know, then you're out of line. And this is all fruit of eating from the wrong tree that Jesus told us not to eat from, which is a, a, governmental of, a government called the hierarchy government. And it's, it's, it's affected all of us, whether we have been in a function of functioning as a gift to one another, as a teacher or apostle, whatever, whether it's been that, or whether we have been sitting in the pew, you know, standing up and sitting down and shouting whenever we were told, told to. Come on, guys. This is just definitely not family, Okay. Um, but it, it, it definitely has affected us. And because it's been a wrong, a wrong um, setup among us. So it's wounded on both sides. It's wounded those that have been set in a function of pastor uh, because the pastor has to bring them the message that everybody needs to get every week. And if the pastor doesn't bring that message, then uh, who's going to bring it because the pastor's supposed to bring it. And if the pastor's really weary and, and really feeling like he or she needs to be ministered to, it's too bad because there's no one else because the pastor has to bring the word. And it, it's put false pressure on some, and it's put false pressure to perform 
on 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 some and then it's boosted others to want to be i want to be an apostle in fact there went there was a stage recently where people who were pastors became prophets and then and then when the apostolic came about then they became apostles so now they were apostle prophet pastor teacher and guess what we can all function in all five of those we can we can all function in all because they're simple things and as we go into more of our identity we'll see how simple it all is and probably recognize those different things in in our life already functioning but unfortunately because it was set up like this in a hierarchy system we came under a false government there is only one government it's the government of the godhead over us the sons in the household of the father and we learn to function together with one another so as it, just taking, for example, teaching, which Kathy and I are, are doing here, it's we are sharing to facilitate you to hear what we have to share and see what you get as you listen to Holy Spirit. And then you go forward. And trading is, is a, a opening up our, something we get as a revelation for someone else to benefit from it and trade into it. So if I share something that comes as a revelation, or Kathy shares something that comes as a revelation to you, you get it, you take it, you, you run with the revelation and, and, and go with it. And you get even more revelation, and we get more revelation, and we share with one another. So basically, we're facilitating each other based on revelation that we're receiving. That, that's really what t the teaching gifting is. It's facilitating one another on the revelation that we each are getting. That's why we love doing it together when we engage together in heaven, okay? Because then what's happening is that each person is able to share what they're seeing and what they're hearing. Um, so, yeah, and, and of course, as we come out of that old framework, uh, which had a lot of junk associated with it, of, you know, come to my ministry, let me lay my hands on you, and then you'll be well. Instead of helping us to see Jesus made us well, let's go together and get it from him as sons. Uh, so we, we're breaking free from that hierarchy system and how it's affected us. And that's one way in which we trade. One way in which we trade is when we see something that's out of line with the way heaven is, then, and we've been engaging in it, means we've been accepting it, condoning it, promoting it, even being intimidated by it, all those things, or being judgmental of it, all those things are, are trades into that, that system. If we've traded into that hierarchy system in any way, and we've allowed anyone to be between us and God, we've allowed anyone to go govern over us, then, then we get to come out of that trade. So what we do when we've traded wrongly is what Kathy said, the power of the blood of Jesus has been given to us. And we trade into the blood of Jesus and receive that he's already removed that. So we appropriate that removal out of our life, out of how it's affected our soul, our, our body, our relationships, and we trade then into the truth. So if we're going to untether, disagree with, because to repent means to come out of agreement with. We're going to untether, disagree with, come out of agreement with something. Then we're going to come into agreement with the truth. So we're going to come into agreement with true government and functioning together as family. We come out of agreement with false government and functioning together in a very disjointed, and false way. If, if this is something that you can identify with right now, then I would like to um, ask you to join with me and we will go and this is a trade because there's many different trades. Trading into heaven and heavenly realms is what we really want and trading into our relationships with Father Jesus and Holy Spirit. One of the places in the realms of heaven is the trading floor of 
the different courts of heaven. And we're, we're not going to go into all of that. We're just going to, we would just go to one court together and we would do the trade. And that would be the mobile court. It's the place where the enemy has accusation. Oh, look, you're still, you agree with all that stuff. And we're going to say, uh, no, we don't agree with that. And we're going to establish ourselves in heaven in agreement with true government. Kathy, you had something to share? Can get un unmuted. Um, yeah, I was just going to add that um, um, the tithe. You you reminded me. You didn't say this exactly, but you reminded me that the tithe is a trading floor, and when you and and trading your money into a a church or a doctrinal system or um, or into a ministry is a trade. So you're trading something that belongs to you into them. And so I was just going to mention, um, there's a whole lot to the Hebrew uh, trading system about finances that um, is pretty obviously has worked. Because if you look around the, the Jews, the Jewish system, the Jews are the ones that are con continue to do a lot of the Hebrew way of thinking, Hebrew way of trading into, into truth. And, and it's been very successful for them. They're usually very, very successful people. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> Excuse me. In Constantine's day, um, <clears throat> the Jews were like ten percent or less of the population, but they had ninety percent of the money. Those are my numbers, but it was like that. It was huge. And so Constantine sat him down and goes, "How do you do this?" And so he told the Jews told him. And so that's when he he took it over and he decided to start hiring people to uh, to be in charge of the church, quote unquote, the church. That's, so we lost the Hebrew mindset. We lost the Hebrew way of doing things, which has not actually helped us very much. And <clears throat> so we're kind of coming back to that. And I have to admit that I don't know the whole thing, but I know about two different parts that I want to share with you. One of them is called the Teruma, which is um, something you'll, you might see in, in some of the conferences, like Ian Clayton conferences and stuff like that, where they have a bucket where people trade into it. If they hear a truth, they trade into that truth with something like a dollar or something, you know, but they're trading into that truth. They have, they're giving something of their own into to that truth because it's a trade. They want that truth to come to pass in their own life. So they trade into that. And then there's a, a giving to the poor and they were, um, this, the system required them to give a certain percentage, which was not a whole lot, but a certain percentage of their day's income, day's wages to the poor. And, and so they did that. And, and, and there's others. They, there's things they had to give to the priests and all that. But these are the two piece, pieces of it that I know right now. But it, it's an awesome system. It's just really an awesome system. And, um, and it works. You know, it's God's way. It's one of the ancient paths, and it's worked. It works. So that, I, that's all I wanted to trade, uh, share, Michelle, or add to. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah, um, as you were saying that, Kathy, I was just thinking about uh, the different ways in which the Lord, like for example, seven years they would use their land and then one year would be fallow so that it could have a renourishing. And so there were different ways in which, uh, you know, that also um, they gave to uh, other, you know, the priests um, as well because of their service. Um, I mean, I think to be honest, when we trade into honor and we trade into love and we do everything in love, then we're free to, to give and to trade and to, we can trade into each other in various ways. We can give time to each other. Time is a trade. We can give, um, we can give counsel to each other. We can give practical assistance to each other, all different ways and, and, and we can give financially to each other. And all of it has to do with the love to the Lord and love for one another. Whatever we trade, when we trade in love, it produces the results, the fruit, the fruit of love. So that's really a foundational thing um, with regard to trading. I would say that's the foundation floor that needs to be laid for us is that every trade is to be a trade in love. And I, I believe that that's what we will look like 
in fully manifested sonship that our full trades are always trades in love. So, thanks for that, Kathy. Um, I, if you are all in agreement on this, um, then you can just say, you know, yes, I, I agree, I want to participate in it. But what I would like to, to lead us into um, is that we would, uh, we would go to the mobile court together and we would, um, we would make a trade. And where we have been subject to, and this is just if you are in agreement with us, if you are questioning it still, you have, you don't, you're not ready for it, whatever, feel, please feel free. There's, there's, there's no, no uh, requirement here. I'm just making an opportunity for us um, because I do see it as a hindrance to family life. And I do see how it has stolen from us um, our true worth and identity in living together with one another. So I would like to um, invite you into the mobile court together and I'd like to just lead you in uh, making the trade into the blood of Jesus and coming out of the, the, false, um, the false trading into the, tree, into the um, hierarchy system. In the heaven realm system, we have the trade um, that is, sorry, hang on one second. Um, so let me, let me add something. Um, okay, sure. Most of us at, in our journey, to um to get to the place where we can come into full alignment with either the um the fiery swords guarding the tree of life or the cross or whatever have had to uh, you know like 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 take each one of these satan's trading floors and go lord have i traded on this floor and how have i traded on this floor and where and, and let the Holy Spirit show you. Let the Holy Spirit examine you because he will. And, and, he, in, and the safest place to do this is in the courtroom because, because Jesus is your um, advocate. You know, he's on your side. So, and the, Satan, the, the heavens, trading, the heavens uh, courtroom is, a, I guess that would be considered a trading floor, wouldn't it, too? But anyway... Um, it's the safest place to do, to, do, to deal with the enemy and his accusations. And so we've all pretty much had to deal with ourselves, find out if uh, us or our generations have traded on these floors and, and have that forgiven because then that brings our spirit, soul, and body into alignment. And this isn't the only thing we've had to deal with, but it's one of the major things. It's one of the really big things. Just want to add that. Sorry. That's true. That's true. Thanks, Kathy. All right. So, um, if you're in agreement with me, you can just ch uh, type chat and uh, type in yes in the chat. Um, and then uh, you may, while you have your microphones off, um, I think uh, you know just the. We're speaking these things out together, but I'm not hearing you. <laughs> but in any case, as you agree with me and what I say, as I stand uh, on behalf uh, of, of this whole thing. I, I, then... agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, Linda. <laughs> okay, awesome. As you agree, then uh, when, whenever I say something, you can also say it with uh, outputting your mute uh, off, just keep your mute on, but out loud say, yeah, I agree with that because we were in the realm of the spirit together. Um, okay, so uh, let's see, somebody commented here. Yes, okay, definitely agree. Yes, it's true. Um, okay, so we have agreement. <laughs> All right, so when we go into the mobile court, it's the only court in heaven that the enemy's lies or the enemy's, or should I say, the enemy's accusations can be brought. The enemy doesn't have any right, but there, if there are accusations because we have been trading and agreeing with his trading flaws, okay, um, 
then that's the place where we are able to to uh, have him judge the enemy because we come to our father as priests as children but we come as priests on behalf of ourselves and others we come before our father who's the judge hebrews 12 22 to 24 describes this you have come to mount zion the government of god um, to the father who's the judge jesus who's our advocate the blood that speaks the angels of god the cloud of witnesses and these are uh, involved with our development in the earth as sons of god so um they would can be um can be part of the whole um thing because that's how hebrews 12 22 to 24 describes the some aspects of the mobile court so we come to father to judge and we see already we have accusation um, that we have traded in agreement with that hierarchy system. I was just going to say, of course, in heaven, we see the true system of government, which is there is no hierarchy even in the Godhead. It's not Father above and Jesus and Holy Spirit in a triangle below. It's, it's, it's like this, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's, there's union and communion and oneness. Okay. Kathy. Huh. Oh, I'm just worshiping. Sorry. I guess I should probably check my video off. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so anyway, um, as I said, the true government in heaven is, is circular. It's not hierarchy. The father is not higher than Jesus. Jesus is not higher than Holy Spirit. They're all in equal dimension among one another. And so this is how we then begin to be uh, to um, fellowship among one another and relate with one another. We have this one covering, which is the Godhead. And Jesus is the head of the Ecclesia, uh, his body, and we are all together his body. No one higher, no one less. So um, he, we come in together and you can, as we come, look to see, look to hear. And if you get anything, just put it in the chat and I'll bring it up. And um, as, we're, as we're looking, engaging, um, and we will do this trade together. We will activate a trade. Okay. So let's see if there's any. Yes, circular, Sam. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, we're just going to come. We come through Jesus, the door. We know that we already are seated in heavenly places, yet we are just, um, for the sake of our own, uh, for the sake of our own ability to grasp things, we are just going to. Um, we are just going to come and say we step in through Jesus, the door, and through the blood that was shed for us, we recognize that we are given seats and places and, and access and accepted and received in a new country, a country of heaven, which is our true country. And we recognize that the many places are in heaven. The one we're coming to is the mobile court. And so, Father, we come together. We see each one coming in. Father, we come together, recognizing that we have um, something we want to deal with in this court, and we already have accusation. Father, where this accusation applies to us corporately, um, we, will, we will deal with it, and then we trust that Holy Spirit will open things up to us personally as well. Father, we, we want to thank you so much for the truth and we want to honor you, Jesus, for being the truth, the way and the life and for bringing us into that fullness of restoration through your death and resurrection. And we want to honor your blood, Jesus, that is the trading floor for our complete deliverance from every false, evil trade. We want to honor all the angels on assignment over our life 
and the angels on assignment over are the scrolls of our life for the purposes that we are to fulfill in the earth. We want to honor all those among the cloud of witnesses that are family members and others, the men in white linen that are part of the ecclesia in heaven. We honor you and we want to come into full agreement with all that we are, that we may really trade together with you, um, men in white linen and cloud of witnesses. Father, we thank you for being the awesome judge. Um, we just appreciate that reality that you are a judge here. So, Father, we have come to repent and we are coming out of agreement with the trades we made. We repent, Father, for where we have promoted a hierarchy system among us as brothers and sisters, for where we have prided ourselves and set ourselves above one another, for where we have called ourselves the, 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 the reverends and the apostles so-and-so or the prophet so-and-so, where we've called ourselves father, teacher, so-and-so. Father, we repent for where we have put titles on ourselves, that we have seen ourselves as the trained ones and others of among us as the, as the as we've seen ourselves as the clergy and others among us as the laity. Father, repent for where we have gone to uh, schools, um, man-made school institutions or, or schools that have given us uh, degrees in, uh, in theology and then set ourselves up as, 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 as a pastor or a teacher or an apostle over others. Father, we repent for where we have gone to the world's ways and the world's institutions, and we have operated in that and tried to put that into the ecclesia. Father, we repent for where we've operated in pride and we're arrogance and we have told our brothers and sisters to sit down, stand up, shut up, speak up, give to us, <laughs> sow into our ministry, let us lay hands, let us bring the prophetic word to them. They must come now because then they're going to receive a fantastic word that's going to change their life forever. We repent for all these things we've done, Father, where we've just promoted our own self-ego. Father, we repent for where we have called people to come and sow into our ministry, and we've wanted them to come and serve our ministry vision. Father, we repent. We have not operated according to heaven at all. We have operated according to a false system and a false um, a false idolatry of ourselves. Father, we repent for where we have manipulated people to trade into our ministry uh, using manipulative words and saying, if you trade into this ministry, then God's going to bless you. Father, we repent that we have taken the very blessings that Jesus has provided through his death and resurrection and made available to all of us. Every blessing in heavenly places freely given to us. We repent for where we have taken that you know, and, and, and ignored that reality and told our brothers and sisters, you, you trade into this and you sow into this and then you'll be blessed and your family will be blessed. And if you trade $20 now, you're going to receive a double pour, a double portion. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's funny. Anyway, it's it's sad, but it's funny that we have done this, Lord, and that we have promoted these false ways among us. And Father, we repent for where we have actually given into this and agreed with this, and we have sown into these trading, and we have. And we have come um, under these, these manipulations and false governmental things. We repent for where we have told our brothers and sisters, if you don't stay in this church, then you're, going to be, you're, not, you're not going to be blessed. And, and we have told them, you have to be under a covering or you're cursed. Father, we repent for where we have lied to one another and we have tried to intimidate each other. We have dishonored each other. We have dishonored the gift in each other. Father, we repent for this pride and arrogance. And Father, we repent for where we have agreed with it, where we have come under it, where we have allowed ourselves to be manipulated and we've sowed into people's ministry because they have been manipulative in their great discourse about money. And we have instead 
instead of recognizing Jesus as the provision for everything, we have traded in to their manipulative things so that we could have a blessing that's already been given. We repent for every trade we've traded like that, Father. And we repent for where we have tried to, um, where we, and we repent, Father, again, where we have set ourselves up to have our ministry and our intercessors. Father, we repent that we have called our brothers and sisters to serve us. If we were in any way a part of a gift ministry, it would be to serve our brothers and sisters. But we have made it a hierarchy system and we have had our own entourage of those that are our armor bearers. Father, we repent. We have, we have sown into it where we, have, where we have promoted it and where we have entered into it by being armor bearers, by sitting, agreeing with being an intercessor to a ministry of someone else, to a vision of someone else. Father, we repent that we have found ourselves in these false ways we repent that we have not understood or agreed with our true identity. We have not honored in our true identity. And so we have acted subserviently. We repent for where we have sat in a pew week after week, month after month, to listen to one brother or one sister bringing a message. And we repent, Father, for where we have quenched the spirit through us and the messages and the gifts and the revelations through us that were meant to be. We repent that we did not accept what Paul said when he said, when you come together, each one has something to give. And we repent that we did not operate that way with each other. And we found ourselves sitting in a pew and we found ourselves submitting to this, to our brothers and sisters as though they were government over us. We also repent for where we were critical and we criticized and we found fault and we criticized and gave in trading into Leviathan with gossip and slander and so on with regard to this hierarchy system, whether it was us criticizing pastors or <laughs> teachers, where we criticized one another, Father, we repent. We repent for where we condoned it, where we agreed with it, and we repent for where we were intimidated and allowed ourselves to be intimidated by each other. Father, we today come out of all trading with this hierarchy system of government that Jesus spoke us not to join in with. And today, we ask and receive the blood of Jesus to remove all the trading that we personally have invested into this false trading floor. All the demonic trading floors that we gave room to and every way we traded into Satan's demonic trading floors by submitting to this hierarchy system, this false hierarchy system. We repent that we ever let anybody rule over us. Today, Father, we, we recognize and honor the truth that we are yours and not man's, that we are, belong to you and not to men, that we are accountable to you as beings created by you and for you, that you are the, are the one who has right and root to rule and govern and be our Father. And we honor you, Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit as the true government over us. So as we repent, we receive your blood, Jesus, to wash us clean in our conscience, in our memory and imagination, to wash us clean in our mind, will, and emotions, to wash all our gates clean, to wash us clean in soul and body, in conscience and subconscious to cut off and remove us from all ungodly connections in the body of Christ, in the family of Christ today. Today, Father, we receive our freedom. We thank you for judging the enemy that we gave room to. 
And we thank you that we agree that the enemy has no more room. We now shut that door of that, to that trade. We no longer trade accordingly to that hierarchy system. We now accept, Father, the true government. And we agree that as family, we trade according to the true heavenly government with each other and with you. Thank you, Father. If anybody seeing anything, uh, has discerned anything, please share that. Oftentimes we see things uh, as we stand together going on in the court and I just wanted to give an opportunity if any have seen anything that you would uh, feel free to unmute and share that. Okay, Father, today we agree to step into our true place of authority as sons and our true relationship with each other as brothers and sisters. I um, see that the enemy has, has used this to steal Yeshua's bride in way more ways than one. And... Um, that um, the, the more of us that can recognize this and come out of this agreement, the, the um, more power we take away from his kingdom and his possibility. Because the bride doesn't belong to Satan, it belongs to Yeshua. And um, yeah, that's what I just see where I stand around is that, that Yeshua's like, going, or that Satan's going, dang. <laughs> it's like, because we're taking our, Take, she was taking this bride back. Thank you, Kathy. Awesome. Anyone else? Everyone very quiet today. <laughs> um, I also see uh, the father handing out freedom papers to everybody. Oh. And um, to freedom papers to be, uh, to be your own person before him, that Yeshua is your high priest. Mm -hmm. And the only, you know, thing that needs to go between, <laughs> we don't need to go between, we go to Yeshua and then he does introduce us to the father. But, um, that uh, if we're just freedom papers that we can all, because there's so much more. I mean, it's just the beginning. Yes. Um, freedom to be co-laborers, yes. to be co-heirs, to um, actually come into an understanding of who God created us to be, because mm -hmm. um, those that have gone before us realize that the human spirit, the human humanity is designed to be limitless. And mm -hmm. we have so limited ourselves to, anyway, earth things. So. Well, let's just receive those papers and if you feel to, I felt to sign it, you know, just to put your signature there, um, that this is a freedom paper that you receive from the Father. You're signing it. The Father's in agreement. This is his verdict to give us a freedom paper to sign. And because Father's verdicts, we know it's true. We know what's already ours, but there's a way in which we engage with Father that is different every time. So sometimes there's a verdict that comes like that. And so we can just um, sign that freedom paper. And it's, it's really, in a way, it's our divorce paper from that false hierarchy system. And it's our true um, 
engaging and our true um, trading into our true freedom paper and we can take that into our the, the garden of our heart and um you know embrace it um so, so that, um go ahead so go ahead. Barack, Barack said uh, i guess that's how you say it sorry if that's the wrong anyway he Barack says i just noticed the fire i believe in his purifying fire and or the fire of his judgment came over us yeah and mm -hmm. cleansed and purified us yes that's awesome and it is signed with the blood of Jesus. Yes, Samuel. Amen. Yes. Yes, I agree with that, uh, Samuel. So we, we, we just, we agree with that, that it's signed in the blood of Jesus. That freedom is Jesus. Jesus purchased that. That's Jesus has purchased his bride. That's us. He's purchased us. So that's his freedom paper that we agree with it's and it's signed in his blood and we agree with that. So we're coming into a total um, uh, trade into that and we receive it and take it into our heart. I agree. Thank you for the fire burning us, burning, burning out all the false um, patterns and, and the false um, uh, triggers in our life that traded into that. Any ways in which we, we've been wounded father through that, false hierarchy system that we gave room to in the trades we traded into father um we we receive we receive that take back healing health and well-being to our soul and we receive that all uh, all trauma associated with that ungodly trading now we receive the healing to begin to manifest in our being thank you we take back our worth honor and dignity we take back our true um our true identity thank you and we receive you jesus for what you did for us with so much so much thanks so much thanks to free us oh, from that yeah, stuff. After, after you were saying that i started seeing angels coming and bringing us robes and um it, yahweh the father is giving us his dignity honor life and love and i just see us giving him giving all of us mm. robes and crowns um with his honor he's sharing his honor with us in, in dignity and worth and i also see that as um we have these robes and this crown being given to us that they are the scripture came to my mind the government will be upon his shoulders which was meaning that the government would be upon Joshua's Joshua shoulders. Um, but that as we have now come into agreement with the, gov with the government uh, of, of Yeshua, he brings us to be co-heirs and co-rulers together and allows his government to come on our shoulders too. And that's how we now begin to function as part of the family, according to what Father said, because when we were raised up and seated in heavenly places, we were made co-heirs of all that Jesus owns and possesses and co-rulers together with him. So I just see this expression that these robes and this crown is, the, is an expression of that. We already have the robe of righteousness, we all, but this is a robe of governmental, of recognition of our governmental authority together with Jesus. That's what I'm seeing. Anybody else seeing something else or different? <laughs> Trade your yoke for the yoke of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I I know that this is also something that I haven't seen in the court the mobile court before but I, I actually saw us being seated as well so to me that's again a confirmation that 
in this court, the verdict of the Father is to seat us in our heavenly seats of authority together <laughs> since we come to the true, true government. <laughs> get released into our seats of authority. Woo I feel a huge sense of peace and purpose. Thank you, Kathy. Anybody else seeing anything? Any other comments? The more we train things like this, the deeper we can go into the presence of Yahweh. And the more we can go into his presence, the more we understand what it is to know Yeshua and to know the Father, which is eternal life. But um, the order of Melchizedek and everything that is quote unquote done as a, as a member of the order of Melchizedek is done out of his rest is not done out of our striving or our doing. Um, he wants us to be human beings, not human doings. So um, it's all done out of his rest. So and I, that's what I'm feeling is just a huge sense of rest and peace. And that we're, we can, um, and that the more we get accustomed to that and operate out of that place, the, um, the, the more of Yahweh that can flow through us into the world around us. Um, Baruch says, yes, purpose. I saw these scribe angels taking account of what is happening. They were writing things down. Yes. Thank you, man. Thank you, Baruch, for that. We honor the scribe angels. Thank you for writing this down, recording it for us. We have come into agreement with it. <laughs> for it to be a testimony in heaven and on earth. <laughs> this is actually a victory that you can plant in the garden of your heart. Mm -hmm. And... Um, this is also something you can take to the sea of glass and trade. If you feel like you something's been stolen from you, particularly, um, you can take that and like, like a copy of this and um, <clears throat> and take it to the sea of glass and trade for um, for like whatever you want from God, whatever of His nature and character that you want from Him, or whatever it's been whatever's been stolen from you. Like if you have been not allowed to express your gifting whatever that is in the church system that's something that's been stolen from you is, is who you are so you can trade you can trade for that 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 you will be allowed to um to express your gifting if i can use those words yes yes and that that's that's another thing um we can personally then with holy spirit um, have more specific things with regard to this that we may that may come up that we can just add to. Um, uh, we can add to this um, trade that we've just done, and you can come into the court of heaven, uh, the mobile court as well. Again, if you if you chose to, if something else came up and you saw that, oh, you know, that's I see that, and it's also part of the way I was in that wrong trade. I'm just going to repent for that, or I'm going to and come to the court of uh, mobile court and take back, or go to the sea of glass and just say, "Lord, I just, I just receive back. I trade, I trade." Um, and uh, as Kathy said, just 
the sea of glass is a place to trade and, and give back. We, can, we could even go to the sea of glass and just give back um, the crowns, just lay the crowns down, um, recognizing that it's just a recognition that it, it's, it's our honoring the Lord just for who he is, really, and um, also receiving. Um, it is a trading place. Uh, but in the court, in the mobile court, whenever we do come into a mobile court, as we are even right now, um, um, we just also recognize that as in a court case in the natural, when you present your case, you also present to take back what was stolen. So there could be specific things that you would want to take back. Mm. You could even take it back even now. You could take back something that could be coming to your mind that you felt was stolen from you by um, the wrong trading we've repented of. Yeah, I, I, think, she, I think this is what Michelle said, but I'm going to rephrase it. So this is spiritual experience. You can, you can return to it if you need to or desire to, and ask um, either the, um, the righteous judge to examine you and tell you if there's anything else that needs to be repented of. Um, or you can add an addendum. You could just do an addendum to this court case. But, yeah. Yeah, if you enter, enter in and add an addendum. But you can enter, you can come back to this place. You can even call the enemy into the court, a Jew or the enemy to come to the court and tell you what it is that he is accusing you of. We'll go into the court system more later, but I'm just kind of giving you some ideas. <laughs> come on. So um, while we thank you, Lord, for this time, we thank you for the scribes that have recorded this. Father, we thank you for what you've given to us. Jesus, we thank you for that that freedom, freedom um, paper that we've been given, signed in your blood, Lord, we receive that. We thank you for the, the robe and for the crown. And, and we thank you that you have ordained us to be um, part of your government, to know that you are the true government, to be part of your family. We honor you um, for what you have done. And we receive the fullness of all what your blood has accomplished for us today against all those false trades. We receive the judgment against the enemy, Father. We take into our heart now that um, the, the, the freedom that we have and we take with that uh, restoration of everything as it comes to mind, that we might specifically receive it from you. Um, we just receive this blessing of being free, of being delivered, as it were, in the court in heaven. Thank you. We step out of the court. And uh, we learn together how to um, function in heaven. Um, and uh, so there was an example, there was a trade, and we were able to activate um, trading. Now you can go to the court anytime, as Kathy said, on any situation. And most, most of the time we do know that there's something, when we do know that there's something that's a pattern, an ungodly pattern that we can go and trade in uh, onto. But sometimes we may see a pattern and not really know how that pattern has the right to operate. And that's what tr uh, Kathy meant when she said you can go and you can ask for the accusation to be made known. And maybe as we uh, go into another another week's session and if we when we continue on in the courts we will um just give some examples of that i think we uh we'll finish our session today um, so Baruch, barack said that he had a picture where we received a new heart and the heart of stone was being removed of where this hierarchy system had hardened our hearts wow awesome said Wow, I actually felt something happening in my heart. Oh, that's wow, awesome. That awesome. So beautiful. Thank you guys for sharing. Yeah. That's just awesome. And you know what we can agree with? We've give, we, in this, we give our hearts completely and our whole lives completely 
in honor and recognition that we belong to our God. We are not our own creation and we are not anybody else's creation. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. I think I'm going to switch the... Um, switch the recording off. <laughs>